brought to you by the Coalition to Save the Boombox. Major funding is provided by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Corporate funding provided by Polaroid Camera Company and the Atari Corporation of America. Generous funding and production support provided by Rehab Media. With additional support from Anatomy Creative. And by the financial support of viewers like you. In order to fully appreciate the significance of the modern boombox and its place in our culture, we need to begin at the beginning, 35,000 years ago, when our Cro-Magnon ancestors first came into contact with Blastus Maximus, or the boombox. Carbon dating and fossil findings suggest that this first encounter likely occurred under a rocky overhang in southwestern France. Though the nature of this encounter can only be speculated, it was only a matter of time before the boombox became a prominent feature in cave paintings and stone carvings. It's actually very fascinating. What we currently surmise, given the discovery of new burial sites and our interpretation of cave paintings, is that these people held the boombox in supremely high cultural regard. Scholars maintain that were it not for the Cro-Magnon man, the boombox would not exist in its current form today. To better understand this, one must look at the conflict that resulted when the Cro-Magnon man encountered the Neanderthal. So what you have to understand is, the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthal shared the world stage for about 10,000 years. And the battling between them, which marked this period, ultimately defined modern man's relationship with the boombox. Researchers have long speculated on how these ancient battles unfolded. Based on fossilized sections of cardboard and petrified mixtapes, we now know that b-boy battles not only originated in this era, but were responsible for the evolutionary dominance of the Cro-Magnon. Thanks to new research, we know for a fact that boomboxes gave the Cro-Magnon the advantage they needed to overcome the mad skills of the Neanderthal. The Neanderthals who relied on beatboxing found themselves quickly exhausted in lengthy conflicts. They burned vast amounts of caloric energy, creating beats with their mouths and bodies, while the Cro-Magnon let the boombox do all of this work for them. Ultimately, this enabled them to spend more time and energy hunting, gathering, and perfecting their sick dance moves. Abrigo do Lagar Velho in Portugal is believed by most scholars to be the site of the final battle between Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal approximately 24,000 years ago. It's simply unbelievable just how fresh these beats were, even by today's standards. Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon men out here in the dust, breakdancing and beatboxing for weeks to the point where they were literally dying from exhaustion. <laughs> Modern archaeology and anthropology have allowed us to pinpoint almost the exact moment when the destinies of human and boombox became intertwined, more than 24,000 years ago. From this point forward, human history would bear the indelible freshness of the boombox. Continued in part two.